So you're wondering how you can create an engraved effect in Illustrator? If your answer is yes, then you're in the right place. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius, I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years, and in this Sembato Task Plus tutorial I'll put my experience to use as I show you step by step how you can create this engraved effect using Adobe Illustrator. To complete this effect, we'll use this photo from Envato Elements, so make sure to check out Envato Elements where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts, and many more, all ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. No lock-in contract, which means that you can cancel anytime. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Let's move to Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop-down menu, set the width to 850 and the height to 1270 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. And then you can click this button to create your new document. Start by pressing Ctrl and plus several times to zoom in on your artboard. Next, go to Window in the menu bar and first of all make sure that the control panel is active. And then open all the panels that have this check mark. Once you're done, go to View and Show Grid, which will enable a grid. Go again to View, but this time to Snap to Grid, to enable the Snap to Grid feature. And for this tutorial, you need a grid line every 10 pixels, so let's go to Edit, Preferences, Guides and Grid. Just enter 10 in this grid line every box. Click OK to apply the changes, and let's start by selecting the Line Segment tool from your toolbar. Now you can either hold down the shift key and simply click and drag to easily create a perfect horizontal line, or you can click on your artboard, set the length to 190 and the angle to 0 degrees, and then click OK to create this horizontal line. Keep it selected, and first of all lower the stroke weight to 0.5, and then go to Effect, Distone and Transform, and Zigzag. Check these two boxes, lower the size to 8 and the number of ridges per second to only 1. Click OK to apply this first effect. You'll need to have this curve on the top, so let's quickly go to Object, Path and Reverse Path Direction. Now go again to Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. Increase the number of copies to 10 and drag this move vertical slider to 5 pixels. Click OK to apply the second effect, and let's continue with the rectangle tool from your toolbar. Click again on your artboard to open this window where you can set the size of your shape, make it a 190 by 30 pixels rectangle. Let's use the selection tool to move this shape in this exact location. Remove the stroke color, which will make your rectangle invisible. Move to the layers panel to drag this invisible rectangle below your line. And now all you have to do is select both of these shapes and drag them inside the swatches panel to save them as a pattern. Now that you've got your first pattern, let's select the line and increase the stroke weight to one point. Reselect both of these objects and drag them again inside the swatches panel to save your second pattern. Reselect the line and increase the stroke weight to two points. Select again your two objects and again save them as a pattern. And finally, reselect your line. This time, increase the stroke weight to three points. Reselect both of your objects and one more time, drag them inside the swatches panel to save them as a pattern. Now that you've got all of these patterns, you can select again these two objects and remove them, and move to Envato Elements to download this photo. Simply drag it inside your Illustrator document, keep it selected, and for the beginning, let's focus on the control panel. Make sure that this constraint button is checked, and lower the width to 870 pixels. Next, make sure that the alignment is set to artboard and just click these two buttons to easily move your photo in the center of the artboard. Click this image trace button 
and then click this other button to open the image trace panel. You can start by lowering the threshold to 120 and then click this advanced button which will give you access to the rest of the settings that can be adjusted. Let's increase the paths to 100%, lower the corners to 50%, increase the noise all the way to 100 pixels, disable this box, check the ignore white which will remove the white from your traced image. Now you can also go to view and hide grid to disable the grid. Go again to view and snap to grid to disable the snap to grid feature. And then you can go to the transparency panel to lower the opacity of your traced image to about 30%. As we're about to add another three copies of this image. And having the opacity lowered will allow you to see all your traced images as you're adjusting the copies. So let's press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add a copy in front. Keep it selected and just lower the threshold to 60. Press again Ctrl C and Ctrl F to add a copy of this selected image tracing. For this one, you need to lower the threshold to 35. And then press one more time Ctrl C and Ctrl F. And for this image tracing, you need to lower the threshold to 30. As you can see with these four image tracings, your goal should be to gradually reduce the amount of black using the threshold slider. Keep in mind that the threshold values will vary depending on the photo that you choose to use. Now that you've got your image tracings, you can close this panel. Let's also turn off the opacity for the top three image tracings. Select the remaining one and increase the opacity back to 100%. Go to expand to expand your image tracing and turn it into a vector shape. And now you need to turn this group into a compound path. So let's go to object, compound path and make. Or much easier, you can use the control and eight keyboard shortcut. Now that you've got your compound path, let's select the fill and just apply your first pattern from the swatches panel. And now you'll need a transform effect to rotate this applied pattern. So let's go to effect, distort and transform and transform. First of all, set the angle to 25 degrees. And then most importantly, you need to check this transform patterns box and disable the transform objects box. Click OK to apply this effect. And let's move to the second image tracing. Select it and increase the opacity back to 100%. Expand it and again press Ctrl and 8 to turn your group into a new compound pad. Apply your second pattern for this new compound pad. And go again to Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. This time set the angle to minus 45 degrees. Click OK to rotate the applied pattern and let's move to the next image tracing. Select it and again increase the opacity to 100%. Expand it and turn the resulting group into a compound pad. Apply your third pattern for this new compound pad and then go to Effect and Apply Transform to apply that same transform effect that you used for your second compound pad. Let's continue with the final image tracing. Once again, you need to increase the opacity of this image tracing to 100%. Expand it and turn the resulting group of shapes into a compound path. Select the fill and apply your final pattern from the swatches panel. And then go again to effect, distort and transform and transform. This time set the angle to 15 degrees. Remember that only the transform patterns box should be checked. Click OK to apply this effect. And let's go again to Effect, but this time to Artistic and Film Grain. Drag these sliders to 20, 0 and 10. Click OK to apply this second effect. And let's go one more time to Effect, this time to Brush Strokes and Spatter. Drag the sliders to 3 and 5. Click OK to apply this final effect and return to the appearance panel to change the blending mode of this field to multiply. 
Now you need to add a background for this design. So let's reselect the rectangle tool from the toolbar. Click on your artboard to create an 870 by 1290 pixels shape. Select the fill and let's apply a linear gradient using this button. Set the angle to 90 degrees. Move to the control panel and quickly click these two buttons to center this new rectangle. Let's drag it in the bottom of the layers panel below the rest of the shapes that make up your design. And then let's focus on the gradient sliders to adjust the applied gradient. You can start with this one, just double click it, change the color mode to RGB and then replace the color with 220, 240 and 230. Move to the left one, again change the color mode to RGB and replace the color with 110, 130 and 120. And finally click on the gradient bar to add a third gradient slider. Keep it selected and set the location to 50% and then double click it to replace the color with 180, 200 and 170. Now move to the appearance panel and use this button to add a second fill for your selected shape. Keep this new fill selected and just apply your first pattern from the swatches panel. Let's lower the opacity to 75% and change the blending mode to multiply and then use again a transform effect to rotate your pattern. Set the angle to minus 25 degrees. Remember to uncheck this box, click OK, reselect this top fill and this time go to effect, artistic and film grain. Keep the settings as they come, click OK, reselect the top fill and let's add one more effect. Go to brush strokes and spatter. You need to drag these sliders to 10 and 5. Click OK. And with this final touch, your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to apply the effect on your own photos. And remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job. You can also subscribe if you aren't already. And don't forget to click that little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.